guys welcome back to southern extreme tv thank you so much for hanging out with me on my channel today we're going to be doing a follow-up review on the christensen arms ridgeline uh, 300 wind mag with a carbon fiber barrel and we've got some upgrades So guys, thanks for hanging out with me. I want to dive into this, this accuracy testing and review of the Christensen Arms um, a 300 Winchester Magnum. If you guys have, have watched any of the gun review videos that I've done in the past, you probably have seen my first initial impressions on this uh, firearm directly from Christensen Arms, and it, it came with the, the their factory stock. And um, a part of that review was some concerns that I had shaping up around the accuracy of the rifle. And <clears throat> I actually went through the entire break-in process and actually wound up having to get back in contact with Christensen Arms. Uh, I sent the rifle back in to them, in which case they confirmed to me that the barrel uh, did have uh, 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 something wrong with it. There was a malfunction or a deficiency in the barrel. They wound up completely redoing the entire rifle for me, put a brand new barrel on it, sent me the gun back. Between then and now, I have since upgraded this rifle with a um, XLR magnesium element uh, folding chassis, which is a super nice upgrade. It's got the carbon fiber grip uh, folding stock back here on the side, which I am a huge fan of the folder stocks now because I, I just think that it's a really good feature to have on a, on a rifle that's going to be intended to, to be backpacked in and hunted with uh you know kind of long distance trips it's got the built-in arca rail which is a really big deal to me i love built-in arca rails on on chassis systems especially when i'm coming out doing reviews for you guys it's just easier to come out and do this versus dealing with a bog pod so really excited to to get this gun back out i have done some shooting with it just trying to get this new barrel broken in it does shoot substantially better um, then obviously the faulty barrel that was on the original that I purchased. So I'm really trying to go through the final stages of that barrel break-in process on, on today's video, but I'm, I'm really just trying to dial this gun in, see what type of accuracy we can get out of it, and then give you guys my, my follow-up and initial, or I guess my secondary impression of it. It's a super light rifle. Um, the barrel is a little longer than what I'm used to, but I'm okay with that because of the folding stock capabilities of the XLR chassis system, which is really nice. Today we are going to be running a uh, suppressor on the end of this 300 Win Mag. This is the Omega 300 DTM. Um, started running these this year. Really, really like this suppressor. So super excited to have it on here. This gun is currently sighted in um, without a suppressor. So I have not shot this rifle at all with this suppressor on there. So my point of impact, my POI, is probably going to shift just a little bit. I'm hoping it's not um too drastic so that i can make a couple micro adjustments on this scope and then we're going to go for four different groupings with this rifle to see what we can do and, and how it'll shoot um, for the ammunition that we're running today we are running the norma whitetail and this is a actually a small round for the 300 wind mag it is actually a 150 grain bullet i know that the Win Mag is kind of built around that 180 grain bullet. The one thing that I found intriguing about the 150 grain bullet out of the 300 Win Mag is it's the exact same bullet that I'm shooting out of my 308, my Springfield, my Bagara, my Savages. I love the 150 gram bullet and I've had great success harvesting, harvesting deer with that bullet. Um, but what is intriguing out of the 300 Win Mag with that same bullet is your muzzle velo. Um, your muzzle velocity they're claiming on the box is just south of 3,300 foot per second. Um, you're right around 200 or 300 and uh, 3,200, 3,200 to, to 3150 somewhere in that ballpark is, is where you're going to be depending on your your rifle configuration so you're getting a super fast bullet and you're still able to hit them with that 150 grain um, a bullet down range which is a big deal now obviously i want to do some some load developments and, and i want to see um, if this gun will eventually shoot the 180 grain bullets 
potentially better because I, I do believe that the the wind mag was designed and developed um, to shoot a little heavier bullet and it, and it was designed around that 180 grain uh, uh, bullet so nonetheless we're shooting the normas today and uh, i think it's time that we lock and load this thing and send a couple rounds downrange. i do have two different camera angles so i'll have a, a target popping up here in one of the corners hopefully um, and we'll take a look at some of these groupings and hopefully you guys enjoy this video and we'll see what this christensen arms with the carbon fiber barrel and an uh, xlr magnesium chassis can do all right, hopefully y'all can see me okay. We have been trying to take advantage of the cloud cover over the last couple days um, and have really tried to rip out some review videos and some accuracy videos for y'all. So if you've not watched any of the videos that's previously been posted, we've been doing a lot of reviews, a lot of gun reviews, a lot of accuracy reviews uh, testing. So really nice cloud cover we're trying to take advantage of it first round loaded into the christensen arms rifle so first spot we're going to do we're going to shoot the dead center i'm actually going to take my glasses off since it's a little cloudy <clears throat> we are going to shoot the dead center target and mainly just want to see what the combo is going to be with this uh, omega 300 on the end of this wind mag so, first round, we'll see what we got. Okay, so just a touch low, which I was kind of expecting um, with that suppressor, which is not a, not a huge deal, probably about an inch low, which is not, I can deal with that. We can make that adjustment clicks up all right so there's the first shot now I did make an I did make an adjustment there so we're gonna see see what this does so second shot still the same target dead center Okay, moved it up a little bit. Let's go. Let's go two more clicks up and see what that does. I mainly want to make sure that I want to get it as close to that bullseye as I can for these these next uh, rounds of groupings, just for you guys. All right, third shot made a half inch adjustment there up. Those holes are touching, which is a good thing. So let's see where this one's at. Now this one should be a little higher. Okay, I can leave with that. Probably a back it off one click. I figure two clicks might be a little, just a little aggressive on there. Smooth shooting. So I, that's the one thing I want to talk about while we're waiting on this barrel to cool before we go into these, this next, uh, or I guess the first initial group testing the the gun is super smooth to shoot now it is a a lightweight rifle so the one thing that i really like about having the suppressor on the end is it mitigates a lot of that recoil and this gun doesn't kick even whenever i have the suppressor off of there um, this gun does not kick and the one thing about it though is you do have a you do have a little bit of a barrel jump so sometimes it can be harder to stay on target on those longer distances whenever you shoot um, versus a heavier gun but being able to put the the rifle in this athlon tripod does help a pretty good bit mitigating that and to be able to follow up on on some shots so with that let's go ahead and jump into get three bullets out here we're going to do a three round group let the barrel cool down do another three round group let the barrel cool down and we're going to repeat that process four times um, really nice action on this christensen arms the one thing that i did another upgrade is i added a bigger bolt throw um, the bolt knob that comes on the christensen arms rifle from the factory is really small which is is nice it's designed to be sleek it's designed to be packable 
but in my eyes i was concerned if i was in a situation where i'm shooting long distance at a mule deer or an elk and i need to be able to work that action pretty rapidly to get a good follow-up shot i wanted a little bit more beef right here to grab a hold to i didn't go crazy aggressive but i did go a little bit bigger um and i think that it was a very big um, upgrade in my personal opinion so all right first round of groupings we're going to start we're going to start in the top left corner and we're going to go top left to top right bottom left and then bottom right so let's go a three round group top left and hopefully i can keep my composure together and give you guys a good grouping on this rifle Okay, so bottom bullseye. Such a sweet, sweet shooting gun. Trigger is fantastic. It's got an adjustable trigger, but the trigger is really, really crisp. It's very light pull, very clean break, no slop, no play, which is a big deal when you're wanting a rifle that you plan to, at some point, shoot at a longer distance. So first round bullseye, let's go second round. Okay, that one walked on me a touch. Could have been me though. Still not bad, that's probably a, that's a MOA group right there, but this, this gun, I believe, this gun should be capable of sub MOA, and that right there, I mean, and that could have been, you know, that could have been me pulling. All right, third round. Let's put this one right there with that first one. Hopefully this one and the first shot are touching. Yeah, so not terrible. I would like to see that, I would like to see that third shot and that first shot a little, a little tighter. I'd really like to see them holes close to touching, but you know, that is, uh, that's asking a lot. I mean, that's 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 asking a rifle to be, you know, 0.5 less than 0.5 MOA. That right there is probably an MOA group. That's a it's your typical, you know, one inch group right there, which is not terrible. It's not horrible. Um, but I think this gun's capable of doing better. So let's let this barrel cool down. Um, four or five rounds through there, she's she's steaming pretty good. So let's let it cool down just a little bit, and then we'll dive into some more. Uh, we have given this barrel and everything a little bit of time to cool down. Let's go ahead and do another three round group here. Um, oh, by the way, the scope that I have on this rifle is the Athlon Optics Midas, M-I-D-A-S, BTR Gen 2. Um, really like this scope so far. I, I, I'm not a huge, huge fan of the reticle. The reticle's kind of thin, makes it a little difficult in, in lower light conditions, but you do have an illuminated reticle, which kind of eliminates that being an issue. But pairs really, really nice with this rifle. Length of pull, the eye relief, everything kind of all together is a really good lightweight package, which is what I was trying to accomplish with this rifle. So really cool feature. So let's go and let's knock out this next grouping. And again, we're gonna go, we're gonna go top right right here. So three round group. We'll see how we can do. Okay. So touching the edge of the bullseye, perfect up and down wise, just right on that right edge of bullseye. Shot number two. That's better. That's more better, Blake. That is more better. All right. Now then, two holes touching. It's definitely sub MOA. I mean, that's 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 point. That's 0.5, potentially less than 0.5 MOA right there. So let's go one more shot on that top right corner. Deep breath, Blake, let's not mess this up.
There we go. Not terrible. I think I pulled that one slightly. I kind of didn't have it didn't, didn't feel like a good trigger pull, but it's not terrible. Just just right edge. All holes are pretty close to pretty close to touching. Probably gonna be. I mean, if I could have got that. It's just there's in a straight line. That's that's what's so unfortunate about it, is that first one was just perfectly on the right edge of the bullseye. Second one was touching, but just touching up top, and the next one was touching down low. So probably definitely MOA all day MOA. That one that one may touch or break. Um, might break MOA maybe 0 .8, 0 .85. Just kind of shooting from the hip, guessing right there. But good little group. We got two more to go. All right. Let's go. Got two more, two more groupings left, and uh, that last, last group was pretty good. I felt good about it. I think that last, that last one, I probably pulled just a smidge. Not saying it was me, but a lot of times, a lot of times I can feel myself if I if I don't have a good trigger pull. So, bottom left three round group see what this thing can do okay still hugging that right edge which is a good thing because the more that I shoot this rifle the better the accuracy should get uh, mainly because I'm on the, the tail end of this this break in for this rifle and everything that I've read, all the forums and stuff on these rifles, the, the more you break the barrel in and the closer to the end of that break-in regimen you get, the better it's gonna shoot. So let's go one more, or two more actually, two more in the bottom left. Ooh, that one was not good. That was not pretty at all. God, I swear I didn't think that was me, but that is a uh, that is for sure a flyer right there. Let's go one more. I'd be interested to see if if this one right here is close to that first one. We're gonna shoot a fourth round on this one because probably was me that pulled right there. That's bad, bad. Almost two inches low and inch and a half right. Yep. Yeah. Ah, come on, Blake. You're better than that. We're gonna shoot one more, guys. That second, that second shot was was me. I freaking pulled that. That gum it, Blake. Gosh darn it. <laughs> All right, guys, one more shot at that bottom left. That's on me. I'm making a video longer than it should. Bottom left, bottom left. One more shot. Down there with that other one. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. You got two, <laughs> four holes with two touching, and they're it's a that's a little bit of a variance right there don't really know what's going on with that but nonetheless we still got one more grouping left so let's see what we can do on this last set all right let's see what this last three round group can do and my main goal right here is to not suck <laughs> As a shooter, not as a rifle, as a shooter. Man, oh man, here we go. Come on, baby. We need a good, we need a good, it'd be nice to go out with a bang right here, the number four, number four group, just being a, an absolute stud of a group. Let's see what we can do right here. Bottom right corner, three rounds. So touch right. So we're seeing a little bit of a trend of this thing wanting to gradually walk to the right. And I wonder if that has to do with the carbon fiber barrel. Um, 
For those of you that don't know, a, a, a carbon fiber barrel, or really any barrel, when they start heating up, they tend to walk in one direction or the other. And it seems like this one's, this one's holding pretty stout on that right edge, but that's also trended with all of the other groups. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight shots that's on the right edge. So, you know, it might just be a, a micro adjustment that needs to be made uh, on the scope, but we're not gonna make that adjustment right now. So, <sighs> shot number two, grouping number four. Or better. There we go. There we go. Ah, big deal. All right, we gotta shake it out right here. We got a good breathe. Nice and slow on the breathing. Good trigger squeeze. And let's finish this one with a dang bang. Come on, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. That is the group. That is the group that I needed right there to end the daggum grouping on this rifle holy smokes now that is some sub moa for your butt right there i will tell you right now that that is a breath of fresh air for me on that last group and like i said earlier i think that this gun is going to continuously get better and better on the groupings one thing i want to note because this is semi an accuracy test but also semi review um, is i want to talk about the carbon fiber barrel the one thing that makes me a little nervous with the carbon fiber barrels is sometimes i have found that they heat up really really fast and it takes them a little while longer to cool down versus a steel barrel um, and it should in my opinion technically be the opposite of that it should heat up really fast but then also cool really fast um, but this barrel did fantastic i mean we just shot what three i mean we shot a bunch of rounds right there um and was able to, to to keep doing it without without really big breaks in between and with it being a big heavy you know magnum caliber that's a really big deal to me because i want to go out to the range and shoot the gun learn the gun develop the gun you need a gun that you can shoot consistently and, and that's a big deal so i wanted to point that out but let's talk about the accuracy on this thing we had to make a, a couple small adjustments when we first started shooting which even that group um, the first two shots the holes are, are practically touching but the first legitimate group that we shot was in the top left corner and I've got a tape measure here, which I'll do some cut-ins um, here in just a second, which your that grouping is not quite MOA. I thought it was going to be MOA. You're, you've got those two there about the bottom two are probably seven-eighths away. And then that's an inch. I mean, you're all but... You are so close to being MOA right there. If you're, if it's not MOA, it's probably it's probably an inch and one eighth. In between an inch and an eighth, an inch and a quarter is probably what you're looking at. Um, the second grouping in the top right is a good group, and I think that this one could have been better. It would have been better if that third shot wouldn't have been as low as it was. So right there, that's putting you just barely under um sub moa puts you at about seven eighths of an inch uh which is a very good grouping a lot of people out on the industry would consider that to be a fantastic group right there and, and I, I think it's a good group too i'm just upset because i believe that that flyer i had that was roughly an inch low and about an inch to the right but below the other two holes i think that was probably me that pulled a little bit on there so i'm beating myself up a little bit because i think that group could have been better the grouping number three have absolutely i didn't know i have no idea what happened we shot one which is tracking exactly where the bulk of all the other groups are which is just right edge of that bullseye shoot a second shot and we are the second shot was about an inch away so you're, you're still moa right there third shot was pr almost touching the first hole which is about from there you are half of an inch 
apart. So that would put it at 0.5 MOA. So I shot a fourth time thinking that, okay, well maybe I messed something up and that fourth round flew off down again where that other one was at, which lands right about one and eight inches. So pretty close to MOA off of that grouping, um, which is more than likely gonna be shooter error. That's, that's probably gonna be on, on me. But the fourth and the final grouping is the one that I'm, I'm super excited about. And in my mind, is the telltale sign of what this rifle is capable of a lot of times if you spend if you spend time on the range you know whenever you're shooting a rifle well you know whether the rifle is performing adequately or if the rifle is sub performing or if you as a shooter are performing or if you as a shooter are are performing you know subpar and i believe i was probably performing subpar on the first three groups up until this 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 last one and the last one i believe is the telltale sign of, of this rifle so what do we officially have measurement wise we are at you are, we are right at about 0.5 MOA from, from that. That is a fantastic round, unbelievable. And I really believe, I've not done any um, load testing as far as with the 180 grain bullets. I bought up a bunch of the 150s. The, the whole idea behind this rifle for me, guys, was to take on a mule deer hunt. I really wanna go on a mule deer hunt, and I thought that the 150 grain bullet would be a really good round because it's a it's a fast round out of the 300 Win Mag, um, and it's a it's a heavy hitting round. It's uh, 150 is my favorite deer round um, out of the 308. So being able to use the same thing on the 300 Win Mag platform is a big deal to me. I think that I think that speaks volumes. So it does really good, and I think that if you if I was to break out and do some load development with the 180s, I think that grouping could potentially be a little bit better even though it, it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to be too critical with a rifle that's shooting 0.5 moa and sitting there saying ah well i need i need to be able to find a, a load that's going to do better than that because that round is performing well with this setup the athlon scope the magnesium chassis the omega 300 on the end of it uh, really, really thrilled with this rifle. Again, when I, I first bought this rifle, which Christensen Arms, they didn't send me this rifle. I, I purchased this because I was a big fan of Christensen Arms. They were one of the first ones to kind of pioneer that carbon fiber market. And, um, and you know, I heard really good things about them. So whenever I bought the gun and I had the really bad problems with the accuracy, I was completely bummed out. I, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was bummed. And I was like, man, they, they just don't live up to the hype. And I said, well, I'm gonna call them and see what they say. And when I tell you we were shooting, I was shooting three inch groups where we were at right now. And it was one of those days where it was like, I know that it is, I know that I am not a three inch, I am not a three inch group shooter. I, I'm not the best in the world, but I promise you I'm not shooting three inch groups uh, consistently anyways. Um, and, and sure enough, you know, Chris Thomas was more than willing to take a look at the rifle, turn around time was fantastic. I, I shipped the rifle on like a Monday. It got to them on like a Friday or a Saturday. Within the next Tuesday or Wednesday, they were in touch with me basically saying, hey, we've processed rifle we're in the it's in our engineers hands or look at it. and then by the end of that next week they had called me back and said, hey yeah you know it's unfortunate but you got a bad barrel we're in the process in the barrel we're going to get it together and we're going to make it to gun and away before we send it back out to you and they delivered on a brand new barrel um awesome awesome is performing the gun is everything it is shooting great it looks even better than it shoots it's only gets you and and this right i'm in terms of a, a two thumbs up for the customer service aspect of it because a lot of companies um don't want to stand by their rifle and i will say this they just like anybody it's it's so skeptical when somebody says yeah my rifle it doesn't shoot like it's supposed to be it's not an accurate rifle and and, and i'm guilty of it too a lot of times my first thought process is well as the shooter operating that rifle are you capable of an moa group are you capable as a shooter to shoot a one inch group and if you are are you even capable of shooting below that and if those answers are no, then you're not necessarily 
doing the rifle justice that you're reviewing or shooting and and they took my word for it and i sold them i said you know here's some groupings from another rifle that i've got so just to kind of prove to you that it's not it's not me that that is the problem and they stood by it they made it right and they've got me squared away with a beautiful 300 winchester magnum from christensen arms carbon fiber barrel gotta freaking love it shooting point five MOA groups, man. That is a very, very good thing to talk about. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If there's any questions that y'all have about this rifle um, or this build setup that I've done, drop a comment down below. Um, and I guess if it's this late in the video, hopefully you've already watched the initial impression review of this video. It kind of shows the transformation from what this gun used to look like and then this video obviously now what the gun currently is. So really enjoy it. If you guys got questions, drop that comment down below. And also go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're trying to grow this channel to 100,000 subscribers. So every click gets me one step closer and it means the world. So if there's anything that you want me to review, guns, equipment, drop a comment. I'll try as long as it's within reason and within my budget and my wife doesn't uh, kick me out of the house for buying more guns, then I'll do my best to try to review them. But it's been fun. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys on the next episode.